The purpose of this video is to illustrate how we can determine the concentration of an unknown sample from a calibration curve. To do so, we will rely on the calibration statistics we determined in the previous videos. We are going to be working with unknown sample number one in this video. For each of the three analyzed aliquots, we need to first convert detector responses into blank corrected detector responses. In order to calculate a blank corrected detector response, we will say equals select the detector response and we will subtract the detector response of the blank. To make this an absolute cell reference, again I'll push function F4 and enter. Next I will copy this formula and apply it to the other two aliquots by grabbing on the square in the lower right hand corner of the cell and dragging down. These blank corrected detector responses correspond to a y value. If we solve our equation for our linear regression in terms of x and insert the blank corrected detector responses for the unknown, that allows us to convert that blank corrected detector response into the corresponding concentration of acetaminophen. So just to remind us what we're doing in this acetaminophen concentration column, we are going to solve the linear regression for x, where x is going to be equal to y minus the y-intercept divided by m. So let's apply this formula to solve for the acetaminophen concentration. We will say that the acetaminophen concentration equals parentheses our y value is the blank corrected detector response minus the y-intercept value from our line nest output and because this y-intercept value is going to be the same across all of these three aliquots and I don't want this cell reference to change as I drag down let's make this an absolute cell reference close parentheses divided by m the slope from the line nest output let's make this an absolute cell reference so that we can copy by dragging this formula to the other three aliquots. I'll push enter. Excel by default tends to show a large number of decimal points which is fine. We can always change that by using these buttons under the number category to decrease how many decimal places are shown. I'm going to grab onto the square in the lower right hand corner and drag it so that that same formula applies to all three aliquots. Next I want to increase the amount of space I have here in my unknown sample 1 box and so I'm going to right click on the K column and select insert and maybe we'll insert one additional column so that we have space to calculate some statistics. Here are the statistics we're interested in the average acetaminophen concentration standard deviation and the formula for the degrees of freedom the degrees of freedom itself the students T value and the 95% confidence interval itself. To calculate the average acetaminophen concentration for our unknown, we will say equals average, open parentheses, and then select by left clicking and dragging the three concentrations that we calculated from the linear regression. Close parentheses, enter. Standard deviation equals STDEV, open parentheses, again select by left clicking and dragging the three acetaminophen concentrations, close parentheses. N, which we can visually see is three, but let's just use the formula because that could come in handy if we were to change how many aliquots were analyzed or make modifications to our spreadsheet later. Count those same three N parentheses the degrees of freedom formula, since we just made replicate measurements on three aliquots, this is now considered one-dimensional data. Even though we use the linear regression to calculate these concentrations, these are not direct metrics of the linear regression, something like a slope or a y-intercept. As a result, the degrees of freedom formula corresponds to that of one-dimensional data, or n minus one and degrees of freedom equals, we'll select the cell for n, minus 1. The student's t value we can look up using the formula equals t i n v. 
the probability is 0 0.05 that corresponds to the 95% confidence level, comma, degrees of freedom will select the DOF cell above, close parentheses, enter. And the 95% confidence interval for one dimensional data equals the standard deviation multiplied by the T value, which is the cell immediately above, divided by the square root, SQRT is the function in Excel for square root, open parentheses, N, close parentheses. Enter gives us the 95% confidence interval. Because the standard deviation and the average have units of milligrams per liter, I'm going to go ahead and label those. And the 95% confidence interval is also an absolute uncertainty that has units of milligrams per liter. And now we can report the final acetaminophen concentration to an appropriate number of significant figures. The properly rounded version of the 95% confidence interval would be 0.3 milligram per liter. Since we're reporting the 95% confidence interval to the first decimal place, that's where we need to round our average value. That would be our final answer. Your instructor might ask you to work with the data for unknown sample number two in order to calculate the average acetaminophen concentration corresponding to sample number two. This concludes this video.